first of all, for me, thank you, Elio and Thomas, for this um, amazing workshop, which I've enjoyed a lot. And thank you all for staying to this very last talk. And I'm going to um, present a collection of results about competing orders in graphene-based gauge flow structures. So I, I apologize for being slightly off topic of this last se session. Um, and yeah, this, this collection is basically from these four papers and I'm gonna try to put them in context and compare them in the end. And the results have been obtained in collaboration with these four wonderful people, Dimitri Shishinatze, Andrei Chubukov, uh, Carsten Honakam and Michael Scherer. And my basic motivation here is to investigate the interplay or competition of orders in graphene-based theater structures motivated by systems like these two, intercalated graphene and twisted bilayer graphene. And in particular, I'm interested to understand how you can get superconductivity from repulsive interactions in the vicinity of such an ordered state. Now, before going into um, the details of these two heterostructures, let's first have a look at the basis material. So in that sense, freestanding graphene. They are, um, if you model it by a nearest neighbor hopping on the honeycomb lattice, you get this electronic dispersion with the famous Dirac points at charge neutrality. <clears throat> Sorry, and this means that um, the density of states actually vanishes at charge neutrality, which is bad news for correlations if you want to get a phase diagram like on the previous slide, because it will suppress interaction effects and make graphene a stable semi-metal. However, if you go away from charge neutrality, so you add or remove charge carriers, you find these Van Hove peaks in the density of states. Um, so they correspond to saddle points here in at this position of the dispersion, which are located at the endpoints here in the Brion zone. So if you then manage to get your Fermi surface to this position uh, in the energy dispersion, this means that your system will be prone to instabilities because this density of state peaks will amplify interaction effects, basically because the dimensionless interaction is actually interaction times density of states. And this has in fact been studied a while ago in um, several papers. Uh, and this is what I call conventional Van Hove scenario in graphene here, where the Van Hove peaks correspond to a logarithmic singularity in the density of states. And then the second important ingredient for this conventional scenario is that near Van Hove filling, the Fermi surface is this hexagon, so almost perfectly nested. And because of that, you get a competition between the two main ordering tendencies between a spin density wave, which develops right um, near Van Hove filling, and a D wave superconducting state that is flanking this peak this spin density wave peak. And this superconducting state is also a very interesting one because it realizes a topological superconducting state, the so-called chiral D plus or minus ID superconductor, where the Fermi surface is completely gapped, but the phase of the order parameter winds twice around the Fermi surface um, and leads to this interesting topological feature. So it would be interesting um, or super cool if you could realize this state of matter in graphene or graphene-based heterostructures. However, in freestanding graphene, uh, the, the, this Van Hove point is not reachable, at least not like, like this in the model that I explained. However, it is possible for example, in intercalated graphene or twisted bilayer graphene, but this will come with a price because this will modify the band structure and therefore change the Van Hove scenario. And this is what I want to talk about here in the talk, um, in that sense, the unconventional Van Hove scenario. And more specifically, I want to consider three types of modification 
and so that we can see um, what's what different modifications lead to, how they affect this Fanov scenario. The first modification will be for intercalated graphene, and the second and third will be motivated by, or at least, or even specific for twisted bilayer graphene. So let's start with this first case. Um, here we, we reached this Van Hove filling by chemical doping. So what you do is add ethyrbium atoms, for example, or other lanthanides between the substrate and the graphene layers, which will add charge carriers to the graphene layer. And then in fact, the Fermi surface has been observed to lie at the Van Hove points. Uh, these are, by the way, experiments right from our host institute. Um, but as I said, this comes with a price and you can also see in these APRIS experiments that the band structure is uh, modified. And here I wanna emphasize three points. First of all, the Van Hove energy will be reduced compared to the free standing graphene case, which would be this red line here. And this of course helps in reaching this point. And then more importantly, um, we have what, it's, what is called an extended Van Hove scenario, where one of the bands um, becomes exceptionally flat along the KMK direction, as you see here. And together with that, also the Fermi surface is changed and becomes more of a flattened circle. So in summary, um, you cannot describe this by just a rigid band shift of the freestanding model. Um, and this leads to this first modification for a so-called extended or high order Van Hove scenario, where we have an additional local band flattening around these Van Hove points that changes this perfectly nested hexagon to something that looks like a circle. So the Fermi surface is changed drastically. This means nesting is destroyed and the density wave becomes very unlikely. And instead we would expect new types of orders with characteristic momentum transfer of zero. And then with the density wave fluctuations missing, the question is, is chiral superconductivity still possible? Now to investigate this situation, we have set up um, basically a very minimal model to um, reproduce these effects, the band restructuring, and you can do that if you include up to a third nearest neighbor hopping in your tight binding model. And then by tuning this T3, the third nearest neighbor hopping, you can reproduce the three effects I just mentioned, the reduction of the Van Hove energy, the band flattening. And um, let me just say here, this is not a fit. I just overlaid by AI um, our model dispersion over the Arpus band structure. Uh, and then we also get this round of Fermi surface. So then we would like to investigate what um, happens with this tuned high order situation. And if you calculate the density of states within this model, you find that it now has a power law singularity with exponent one over four. So the density of states peaks, as you see here, is even stronger than in the conventional case. Uh, which in principle can increase the critical temperature if you manage to induce attraction in the superconducting channel. And to see what type of formula liquid instabilities or ordering tendencies we can expect now, we have then as a first step calculated the corresponding susceptibilities. Here you see the pairing susceptibility and the particle hole susceptibility for charge and spin orders. And in both cases, they develop a peak at zero wave vector transfer, which is connected um, to a singularity at zero wave vector transfer up and lowering the temperature, which again has a power law form inherited from the density of states power law behavior. So this means that um, all of these orders here in principle are candidates for an instability, ferromagnetism, charge and spin preferential orders or superconductivity, um, depending on which one has the largest interaction, which channel the largest attraction develops. So which ordering tendency wins now in this high order Van Hove scenario? 
And uh, there is a universal answer to this question if you go to low energies, because then for small temperatures and interactions, the physics will be governed by states around the Van Hove points. And then we can simply consider all scattering processes between these regions near the Van Hove points and patches um, at the Van Hove points uh, and include all couplings that are allowed by symmetry. And in this case, there are four of them, uh, G1 to G4. And then we can use the pocket renormalization group to determine how they develop um, up and lowering the temperature and use the result to extract um, a tentative phase diagram. I don't want to go into the details of the method here. Uh, I'd be happy to chat later about it. I just want to mention that is, it is an unbiased analysis, importantly, um, that accounts for the coupling between all these different orders, ordering tendencies I mentioned earlier. And with that, you know, let me just flash these um, RG equations, basically because I like their color, and then um, jump to the resulting phase diagram, which we extract by, as I said, um, using the evolution of these couplings as an input to calculate, in that sense, RG enhanced susceptibilities um, and extract this phase diagram based on the bare values of the couplings. And here you see the result as function of umklapp coupling G3 and exchange coupling G1 for fixed density density interactions. And then now let's concentrate on this part of the phase diagram, which is for repulsive um, bare values. And then you see that we either find a ferromagnetic state or still a D wave superconducting state, uh, which is still reachable from repulsive interactions. So good news here. And the driving force is actually kind of similar to the um, conventional scenario to the density wave fluctuations because it's still driven by the own club scattering. And also let me just quickly mention, um, if you're interested, we do not find a super metal fixed point in this situation, which had been discussed in just a single order, high order Van Hoof point in the Rion zone. Okay, with that, let me go um, to the next system, twisted bilayography. Um, as you all know, you get this by rotating two sheets of graphene with respect to each other, and then this super lattice pattern or moiré pattern develops. And an experiment, they can control the twist angle here. And furthermore, um, the energy scales are such that the carrier density can simply be controlled by a gate voltage. And the recent excitement about this material is because correlated phases have been observed around a magic angle of about 1.1 degree. Um, and uh, in first, first observation in the group of Papua Bio Herero, which has been confirmed by many other groups and followed by a variety actually of different correlated phases including in particular superconductivity. And um, I wanna say that it seems like the most robust uh, ones appear near half filling of valence and conduction depth. And um, actually this also has been shown to happen in other Moiré materials, but for now let's uh, stick with twisted bilayer graphene and look at um, the band structure here. So then first of all, um, obviously, we have doubled the degrees of freedom here because uh, we have doubled the number of layers. And then there will be a band restructuring because of this Moiré potential, which is a combination of backfolding of the bands, layer hybridization, and lattice relaxation. Um, and this means this backfolding, if we look at the Brion zone, we can describe the backfolded bands in a reduced Brion zone, which I've sketched here in comparison to the original rotated Brion zones of top and bottom layer. And then because of the layer hybridization, it is more convenient to um, describe this doubled number of degrees of freedom in terms of original values K and K prime um, instead of the layers because they remain to a good approximation uncoupled. 
And if we then look um, how the resulting band structure uh, looks like in this reduced linear zone, you find that isolated narrow bands emerge around the magic angle, uh, which had first been predicted um, almost 10 years ago by Morel, Bistrotel, and McDonald. And this is also where these strong correlations originate in. Um, so this corresponds now to a global band flattening because interactions are estimated to be on the order or even larger than the band. So let's zoom into these interesting narrow bands. And then we see that they are narrow, but not perfectly flat. Um, instead, we'll still have Dirac points at the neutrality point and Van Hove points near half filling. Um, so this will again lead to density of state peaks, which are also prominent features in the, um, for example, scanning tunneling spectroscopy spectra. Um, and in the spirit of this talk, this is what I want to concentrate on now. So um, doping to the vicinity of these Van Hove fillings. And um, because of that, I want to consider two modifications of this Van Hove scenario. The first one is a simple phenomenological model that um, looks at the doubling of the degrees of freedom, where we now have um, spin plus some orbital degree of freedom, which in TBG would be associated with the original valley. Um, and with that, we we'll get new types of interactions like the Huns coupling and new types of phases like orbital magnets. And the question is, how does this affect the Van Hove scenario? And how does this interplay with superconductivity? And then as a next step, I want to look at what changes if you now also include a specific um, model for twisted bilayer graphene for the band structure, where we will get incommensurate position of these Van Hove points away from the zone boundary. And we'll also include specific non-local interactions for these uh, four twisted by their graph. So let's start with the uh, first case, which um, can also be regarded as a phenomenological model for that describes the scattering of electrons on this triangular super lattice of the Moiré pattern. And then, as I said, we have spin and orbital or valley degrees of freedom, which leads to a fourfold flavor basis. So if we then add the Hubbard interaction to this, we end up with an SU4 symmetric Hubbard model. Um, on top of that, we include an exchange interaction J to model the direction of strong coupling and the various Huns couplings, which will break the SU4 symmetry down to SU2 by SU2. Um, and this time we've calculated the phase diagram of this model from functional renormalization group. Um, again, um, I don't want to go into the details of the, the method, but this means that we have calculated the two particle correlation function dressed by interactions. We've neglected self energy feedback. And again, the advantage is that it's an unbiased method and momentum resolved. Um, the phase diagram with the main ordering tendencies looks then like this as a function of the chemical potential, which um, tunes the filling. And here we find that now the spin density wave from the conventional scenario is replaced by an imaginary charge density wave. So this corresponds to loop currents in real space. And on the triangular lattice for this filling, this leads to an interaction induced quantum anomalous Hall state. And then again, it's flanked by um, D wave superconductivity. Oh, wow. and, Five plus questions. Five minutes plus questions. Thanks. I try to be quick. Um, so that, that we now get this imaginary charge density wave instead of the real spin density wave is in fact due to the additional degrees of freedom because um, they enhance this fermion loop and this boosts the interaction in ex exactly this channel. And then let's go to the specific model for twist by layer graphene where we now have the Van Hove points away from the zone boundary which comes about due to an anisotropic Fermi surface evolution, as you see here, with doping um, from the two valleys, valley one and valley two. And although maybe the exact model for twisted bilayer graphene has been 
um, discussed for a while, this is a feature that is uh, present in all of these models. So in that sense, we can again get a universal uh, description for low energies, um, small interactions, if we consider the leading behavior that comes from states and patches around the Van Hoven points, and again, include all interactions that are allowed by symmetry between these patches. This leads this time to uh, six couplings, um, if value mixing is excluded, which is negligible. And um, this time we'll get the bare values for these couplings from a specific interaction for twisted bilayer graphene. Um, because it's been shown, if you project the Coulomb interaction into these narrow bands, that um, the resulting lattice model will have a special non-local form due to the non-trivial topology of the TBG bands. Uh, because this prevents a local implementation of all your symmetries and leads to a non-trivial non overlap of the wave functions. And then you get this type of lattice Hamiltonian um, given um, in this paper by Kang and Gladbeck, which has two parts. One is the um, conventional density-density interaction within a honeycomb plaquette. And the other one is the special non-local part um, just the, described by this parameter alpha t that um, can be viewed as generalized exchange interactions or assisted hopping interactions uh, within this plaquette. So um, that part would be zero if you had exponentially localized Bernier functions, but you don't. So that, that's why it's sizable. And then we um, I have calculated all possible um, instabilities of this model by summing different um, ladder diagrams in the channels for all possible ordering tendencies. And if you do that, you find that the most attractive two channels for charge and spin orders are a mixture of spin and charge density wave or valley magnet or charge order. And the winner of these two depends exactly on these non-local um, tendencies uh, described by alpha t. For small alpha t, we get the density waves due to an approximate nesting of the Fermi surface. And in that sense, this connects directly to the conventional scenario, Van Hoff scenario. And at large values of this um, delocalization parameter, we get the valet orders. Let's have a quick look at these um, two orders. First of all, the density waves are now complex order parameters because we have incommensurate um, wave vector transfers. Um, and if we have then analyzed the corresponding free energy, and then you find that both of them, spin and charge density wave, develop simultaneously, and there is a phase factor of pi half difference. So this means independent on the global phase, you'll always have a real density wave part and an imaginary um, loop current order. And then in contrast for the valley orders, they are mutually exclusive. You either get magnetic order or charge order. For the magnetic order, this means we get uh, two magnetic moments in both valleys. And this directly connects to a strong coupling analysis of this interaction Hamiltonian. And for the charge order, this means that we have an opposite occupation of the valleys. And then finally, if you look at superconductivity and some of the uh, letter series in the Cooper channel, you find interestingly that there is uh, attraction on the bare level if alpha t, the delocalization parameter, is large enough. And in that case, the symmetry is also of D wave form. And uh, it's been shown that these tendencies are even enhanced if you also include density wave fluctuations. Um, so with that, let me um, go to my conclusion um, where I want to compare these three scenarios quickly. But first, let me say again that um, I've argued that this conventional Van Hove scenario in graphene, although interesting with spin density wave and D plus ID superconductivity, is not realizable. Um, instead, we have to consider modified Van Hove scenarios, for example, in intercalated graphene or twisted bilayer graphene. And in both cases, uh, this modification also comes together with an amplification of the interactions 
either through a local band flattening or global band flattening. Um, and then we see um, if we look at how the spin and charge orders are changed, that in the case of this high order Van Hove scenario, we now get a ferromagnetic instability um, because nesting is destroyed. While if we just double the number of degrees of freedom in the of the conventional Van Hove scenario, we end up with an imaginary um, topological um, charge density wave. And if on top of that, we consider specific, um, the dispersion specific for twisted bilayer graphene where these Van Hove points are away from the zone boundary, we get a mixture of this imaginary charge density wave and the spin density wave. Um, and for large values of the specific interaction for twisted bilayer graphene, we, um, we get instead valley and valley magnet and charge orders. But in all of these cases, um, maybe due to different mechanisms, uh, if it's electronically induced, we always get D wave superconductivity. So good news for this topological D plus ID state. And then if I can steal one more minute, Elio, <laughs> I want to use this opportunity to advertise positions uh, because I'm looking for PhD students at um, our host institute, actually. So I'm going to move there in October. And if you're interested or know somebody who's interested, um, please contact me. Thank you very much.